If you are a service business that receives work orders and service requests, then this video is for you. I will demonstrate how to build your own work order management system in Airtable. Check it out. As mentioned for service businesses, this is a great tool to be able to organize your work orders, do some scheduling, and really anything you want to build within that type of work order process, whether you're assigning tasks, whether you're tracking your income and revenue, anything along those lines can be built out from this system. I'm gonna start with something very simple for today, but it is a great starting point to learn Airtable and to be able to build a useful system for yourself and your business. Great for companies in the trades, HVAC, electrical, and really any other service type business. If you do not have an Airtable account already, there is a link in the description below to get started. And once you sign up, you can go in and create a new base from scratch. Best practice, first thing we want to do is go up here and rename the base. I'll just call this work orders system, delete all of these fields, and I'm going to build fully from scratch. I will rename this work orders. There's going to be a number of tables that we need. And the first one's going to be work orders here. We want to track things like employees. We want to track things like clients or customers, and we want to track tasks. That's again, going to really simplify the overall business. But the key here is to build some sort of work order and task management system for your business. We have work orders here. I'm going to right click and duplicate the table. And once I've got it duplicated, I will do this two more times because I have a total of four tables that I'm going to build today. Label this tasks. We'll go into this one. We'll label this one clients or customers. Label this employees or technicians or really whatever you want here. So the overall structure is work orders will come in. This will have the information on an overall level, general level to the specific job or work order. And it's going to link to multiple tasks because most work orders will have at least one task, if not a number of different tasks. It can link to the client that you're dealing with and you can assign employees to the work order or rather in this case, what we are going to do, we're going to assign employees or technicians to the specific task. So each individual task rather than the overall work order, but you can set it up any way you want. First thing I'm going to bring in is an auto number. I want a unique ID for each work order. If I click auto number, I'll leave that blank. It will just automatically rename this field to ID. And it adds a random number or not so much a random number, but a unique number to each record that gets created. Label this one description. I'll leave it single line text for now. If you put enough characters in, it will automatically default to a long text field. Add a type, and this can be a single select. We can have things like installation, maintenance, and repair. Duplicate the field. And I'm going to label this one status and I next out some of these and I want to do something like new scheduled in progress and completed. And the default selection is going to be new. You can change the colors as required. Now we have a status that we can assign to each individual work order. And one last thing we want to put in here is maybe a requested date or a scheduled date. But something else I'm going to do is add in two other fields. They're going to be a start date and an end date. Those are going to be looked up via the tasks records that are linked to this. And I'll show you what I mean here shortly, but on the initial intake, so I can imagine that you get a phone call, an email, text, something along those lines, you want to come in here, enter the information and at least assign a date to get started. And so you don't lose track of, of the information that you're entering. We'll go schedule date and we want to add in a date field here. And we'll just default to the current date and we can change the format. I'm just going to use friendly for now. There's a few other things that we're going to add an update here, but we need to link the other tables. The first thing that I do want to link is a client. Every work order needs to come from some sort of client, or at least in most cases, if I go in here and link to the clients table. And we do not want to allow to link to multiple records because we only want one client to be linked to one work order. We can create that field by clicking the clients here. We can see that a work order linked record field was created here as well. 
I can double click into it. And this is correct. We do want to allow linking to multiple records because each client can have multiple work orders that they've requested. While I am in this table, I'm just going to skip past tasks for the time being, and I'm going to add in some of the information that we may want here. We'll go with client name, and this can be a single line text field. I want a phone number in here. I want an email address in here. I want a physical address, which is just going to be a long text field. You could break out the address field to have your street address. You could have your city, your postal code, or your zip code, and those types of broken down information. But to keep things simple, I'm just going to call this address. I'll leave this as client name, but I'll right click on it. I'm going to add in a contact name as well. And in this case, if we have a commercial client, we can add in the company's name, and then we can also add in the contact name at that company. But if we have a residential client, we can just add in the client name here. However you want it to work, it doesn't really matter. And the last thing I want to do, I'm going to come into the primary key field. I'm going to change this to a formula, rename this client ID. We're going to add in a formula here. It's just going to be a catenate and I want to bring in the client name and you can add in some other information here as well. If you want to add in an ID, you could do so. I'll just click save, confirm, change, insert another auto number field so that we can give a unique ID of a certain client has the same name. Let's say John Smith, if you have two or three of them, that way you can easier identify which John that you are working with. I'll just leave the ID as it is and add a comma, separate it with a dash, and I'll bring in the ID as well. Now, if I add in a client here, let's put in John Smith. This is going to be a residential client. And you can see here now it's going to bring in John Smith and assign them with the ID of one. I'm going to flip back to work orders. We're going to change the primary key, the name field, similar to what we just did in clients. And we can go work order ID. I'm going to use a formula field for this one as well. And a concatenate. First thing that I want to do here is I am going to bring in the client name and I'll separate it with a dash. I will also bring in the description and we can separate that with a dash. And I might also bring in the scheduled date. If I'm going to bring in scheduled date, I have to use this format, date time format function. And then I can add in the scheduled date and I will just use this double L character and it will format it nicely for me. It's showing error here because I don't have information linked to it, but I can go in here, add a contact. We can do maybe maintenance new and I'll just select today's date. And because this could get really long, what I'm actually going to do is go in here and change the description and just put in the type. Now we can see here that John Smith has maintenance scheduled or roughly scheduled for August. Click this plus icon again, just going to start typing in tasks and we're going to link to this table here. We'll click link tasks and we can actually have multiple tasks related to one work order. That's fine. I will create the field, go into tasks and you can see it's also in reverse added the work order. I'm going to double click on this one. I'm going to toggle off this allow linking to multiple records because one work order or sorry, one task can only be related to one work order. Add a single line text field. I'm just going to read this task name. And now I'm going to click on the primary key. Similar to what we've been doing, we will bring in a formula field, concatenate function with a task name, separate it by a dash again, and add in the work order. This will create a unique task ID for each task within our system. Here I'll add in status, similar to what we've done at the work order level, single select, and we can go scheduled, in progress, and complete, and maybe we'll just have pending as well. And that can be our default option. Here we can have something like estimated hours if you want, and we'll just use a number field and we'll have it set to one decimal place. We can create this field. We'll go in here and duplicate it. We'll put in actual 
hours. That way an employee come in and add in how many hours it actually took to complete that task. Estimated cost, and this can be a currency field, and I'll duplicate this and go with actual cost as well. Now there's going to be a number of ways that you can add this information. If you want to do it manually, that's fine. You can also use formulas based off of certain cost rates that can complicate things a little bit, but it might be worthwhile for you to do. It all depends how structured this is. Add in a start date and we'll just change this to friendly. I'm going to duplicate that and go with end date as well. And the last thing that I want to do is link this to your technicians or employees. We will link here. We do want to allow linking to multiple records because technically we could assign multiple employees or technicians to this specific task. It will add in a tasks field here for us. Now the employees table, I'm going to keep this really simple, but you could add things like email and phone number. You could add specific documents to that employee if you need to track different certification dates and all of that type of information, it is possible to do. But I'm just going to change this to employee name and keep things really simple in this table. I'm just going to add in a few names here for our sample data. Now we have the base structure set up. If I flip back to the work orders table, we can see here that I have a sample in place. I'm just going to hide this ID here. We've got description, type, status, schedule date, clients and then the tasks that are related to this work order. Also, we can build on interfaces for this video. I'm just going to work with inside the actual base to make sure that we have the structure working and everything set up and in place to get the information and data that we need. In a future video, I might show you how to add in the interfaces to make it more efficient for yourself, but I'm really going to focus on the base side of things for this video. In here, although we already have a scheduled date, this can be used just as like a rough indicator as to when the call came in or when the customer would potentially like the work done. But once you get into it and add in the tasks that are assigned to that specific work order, we can bring in and roll up the dates that exist over here in the tasks records back into the work orders. I'm going to come to tasks here and what I'm going to do is just click the plus icon here. I'll link it to the work order that we have. And I have it set up as maintenance. Maybe what we'll do is installation, furnace removal. We'll remove the old furnace first and then furnace install. And I'll add one more that is going to be something like testing and adjustments. And again, we'll link all of these to the same work order. If we go into this now, we can see that there is multiple tasks linked to this specific work order. Right click on the schedule date. We're going to insert a new field and I'm going to use a roll up. And the roll up is going to look at the tasks table and the field that we're going to look at is the start date. And in this case, it's got this array unique values. We want to change this to minimal values. It is going to find the smallest or basically the earliest start date that exists within all of our tasks. Go back into tasks, go into start date and the first furnace removal we'll select as today. And then the furnace install, we can have that as today as well. And then the testing and adjustment, maybe we need to go back tomorrow to make sure everything is working properly. In this case, what you could actually do is add in a future end date. If a specific task was going to take longer, maybe for your furnace install, you actually have to add in all of your vents, run new propane lines or gas lines. It's going to take multiple days. You could schedule that specific task to span across multiple days, but I'm just going to copy and paste this across because each of these tasks can be performed within the same day that they are started. Flip back to work orders and you can see here it has brought in August 20th and we can tell that is the earliest start date. Now I'm going to go into this, duplicate it, and I'm going to bring in the end date as well, which in this case I want to select the end date field 
and I'm actually going to change this formula to a max. So it's going to look at the largest one, rename this to start date. And we can see here now that these roll up fields are automatically pulling in information that is related to these specific tasks. A flip back into tasks, we can see the largest end date is August 21st. And just for the testing purpose, change this testing date and maybe it's actually going to end on the 23rd. Maybe it's a bigger task for some reason that's going to span multiple days. I can flip back to work orders and we can see that it was updated accordingly here. So else I want to do estimated hours. I'll put in two hours. This is for the furnace removal and install. Maybe I'll put that at six hours and the testing and adjustment could be another two hours. And then here's the actual hours that it took. The removal took three hours, the install took five and testing took one. I'll flip back into work orders. Similar to what we just did, I will right click, insert and do estimated hours. This is going to be a roll up field. We're going to look at the task table again. We can use the estimated hours. It's just going to sum the total hours here. It looks like the estimated amount of hours for the specific job is 10 hours. And if we look here, we've got two plus six is eight plus two is 10. What's rolling that up correctly. And similar to what we did before, I'll go in, duplicate this field, and we'll do actual hours here. And the only thing I want to do this time is flip this to the actual hours. So it's going to roll up or sum the total actual hours. And we can see here that it actually only took nine hours. Nice thing about this, I right click into this here. And with the cost associated, I'm actually going to go into the tax here. And I'm going to delete these two fields. I'm going to simplify this whole thing a little bit. I'll go back into the work orders and you can also do this within the tasks as well. But if I right click on this field, I will insert it and I'll just type in estimated cost, which is going to be a formula field. And maybe I have a standard charge out rate. I'm going to keep it really simple here. I'm just going to take the estimated hours and I charge $120 an hour is my bill rate. I can go into the formatting, click on the format and select currency and save that. And it will add it into a currency format. Duplicate this again, drag this to the other side of actual hours and do actual cost. And I want to change the field that it's using. We'll go actual hours times $120. And we've already got the format set up correctly. I can click save here. The estimated cost was going to be $1,200. The actual cost was 1,080. That's just for the hourly service rate. Obviously there's going to be an additional cost to the actual product itself being furnace. And it's going to cost the five or six or $10,000, whatever the material costs for the job as well. Flip back into the tasks here. In this case, we're going to have two people on the removal. We'll add this Bob. We'll add Matt and then the install. We can add Bob and Matt. And then the next day when they come back, we can just add Bob here. This could help with our resource allocation. If I click this views here, I can go into timeline or the Gantt chart. I'm just going to use the timeline for the time being. I'll go into here. We have a start date. We have an end date and I'll just click next group by the employee. Now we can roughly see by employee here and we can format this in a lot of different ways. We can see who was scheduled to what task on what day. For example, on this group of tasks, we have Bob and Matt scheduled for the furnace removal and furnace install on the same day. But then the following day, we only require Bob. Matt is available to go work on some other job elsewhere. And let's say something else came up and Bob's required to go somewhere else on the Wednesday and need to push it off a day or two. You can just easily grab the final adjustment and just move it to the Friday, for example. And it's opened up the two days for Bob to go wherever else. There's a lot more that you could do with a system like this. As I mentioned, you can add in interfaces to make it easier and display information to specific users or stakeholders that only they need to see. 
You can add in automations that perform different notification tasks. For example, in the task here, if we've assigned Bob and Matt, and maybe the day before this actual start date, it will send an email or a Slack message or a text message, something along those lines to those employees to notify them of this upcoming job. You can use views to display things on a calendar beyond just this timeline that I briefly showed here. There's a lot of different things that you can do, customize this type of solution to fit your company. This would be a really easy starting point to be able to build this type of workflow for yourself. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.